there was a time over a long period when we were the richest country in the world and people used to come to India to buy spices, goods, so many other things. Our technology by those standards were top notch. In fact, if you go to Rama and you find that Rama flew back to Ayodhya by an aeroplane. People said, this is imagination. Not at all. There is a Sanskrit uh, book published some, uh, at least 3,000 years ago called Vama, Vimana Shastra, which describes how an aeroplane can be constructed. So an American friend of mine asked me, what was the fuel that was used for the aeroplane? And so I got somebody to read, which is in pure Sanskrit, the Vimana Shastra, and he told me, there it is written, that it is a form of a chemical. It's not what we know today as petrol. So therefore, all this is there, and we have lost it on the way because of foreign invasions. I remember in my days in Massachusetts when I was teaching at Harvard that there was a big pond of which people used to walk around it. There was a nice road made out of it. So for walking it was a very nice uh, place. And then I saw a, 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 uh, a stand in which was, it was written, here stood so and so company which used to export water from this lake to India. So I was a bit, a bit surprised that why would India import oil? And this is 1633. Why would anybody in India want to buy water from the United States? So I went back and started reading and finally found a book which describes it all. And that is that in Tamil Nadu, in uh, near Madras, People used to come from the Boston area in a ship and they would carry, the ships would be carrying ice which was available during the winter in America. At least in places like Boston, the, the lakes used to freeze and so you could cut it and make it into blocks and take it. And they brought it all the way to near Tamil Nadu, near Madras, and sold it to the king. Because they normally used to come to buy spices and so many other things, clothes. So one day the king called them all and said, are you, are you being looked after well? So they said, yes, but you see, we come with empty ships, you are not buying anything from us and we are buying here only. If you could buy something, it could be easy. So he said, what can I buy? Everything is available in India. Then he said, but one thing, I have never been to Himalayas, so I have never seen ice. In your country, I hear the ice comes from the sky, well actually it meant snow. And so if you bring ice, I will buy it. So these ships used to have ice blocks with all the coverings necessary all the way to Tamil Nadu and give the king the ice. He, he said, yes, in Himalayas there is ice, but where will I go all the way there? So if you bring, I will buy. 
So that was the state of the United States. The only thing they could sell to us was ice. And they were, came here to buy spices and clothes and so many other things. Over the years of foreign invasions, India became weaker and poorer. But India did not lose. The Marathas defeated Aurangzeb and that was the end of the Mughal rule. In Pune, the Peshwas completely decimated the army of Aurangzeb and that ended the Mughal rule. But they were so weak of fighting, fighting, fighting that when the British arrived with their East India Company, India again had, was in no position to fight and so we had a hundred years or hundred and fifty years of British rule where they did nothing but loot all the uh, good things we had in our country. So in 1947 we became a very poor country. We were not poor except for the period when foreign invasions came and looted our country. Now we are recovering. And recovering in a not fast enough way, but fast enough. And particularly after Narasimha Rao's government, which decentralized, gave up all this socialism bunkum, and brought in market economy, our Indian economy began to grow at 6% and 7% from the earlier Jawaharlal Nehru period, Indira Gandhi period of 3.5% uh, per year. But now we must grow at 10% per year. Then only we can become a challenger to the United States. China is not a very big challenge for us if we grow at 10% per year. Can we grow at 10% per year? Of course we can grow at 10% per year. But how does one grow at 10% per year and why is it that the Narendra Modi government is not using those policies? Well, first of all, Narendra Modi must understand economics, otherwise how will he know? If I gave him a book and said, you know, I have written a book on 10% growth rate, he will not be able to understand. If I send it to the planning commission or the other, any other officials, they are all IAS types. They are not brought up in mathematical economics. They will not understand. But ultimately, we have to bring about some way or the other, like we have done in the past, like Narsimha Rao did. Uh, we must learn to now reorganize our economy in such a way that we can grow at 10% per year. If you grow at 10% per year for just 10 years, India will overtake China and will become a challenge to, challenge to the United States. And now I find that India may even overtake the United States. Why? Because many things are happening which you do not know about it, our newspapers don't carry. Take this artificial intelligence. It's going to be the future where the machine collects all the information and you are able to talk to the machine and get an answer. So therefore, artificial intelligence is the biggest development of this 21st century. And interestingly enough, and this is not me who is saying it as an Indian, this is the NASA which did research on artificial intelligence. And he said there will come a day when robots will be able to talk to you. And you can tell the robot, I want so and so and so thing, and the robot will go to the laboratory and get it for you and bring it to you. But what language? You have to type the language into the computer. 
and then the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the artificial intelligence uh, institutions or uh, bodies they will read that and then they will come and explain to you so nasa says that the only language fit for speaking to a computer is sanskrit now when i tell the indians this they don't believe it they say no no swami is a nationalist so he is making it all up i am not you go you go to the uh, google and type the language most preferred for artificial intelligence will say sanskrit if you go to england one of the most respected schools is called st james school st james school children were specially invited by the buckingham palace when charles was being made a king and they were asked the students of this st james school to recite shlokas in sanskrit in a public function where the king of england is being uh, uh, you know is being given his his, his position now people don't believe it if i if I, what i would say to you is go today to your computer and go and go to the internet and ask does the schools which i name i gave you does it teach in sanskrit you be surprised to know that the st james school the principal has given a reply which is available in google that every morning the students of the ages of 6 to 11 i make them recite sanskrit shlokas so they ask the, uh, the google people ask the question why why not latin why not some other of these ancient language he said sanskrit affects the brain and develops it and that is why from 6 to 11 the students who learn sanskrit who speak sanskrit every morning from the ages of from the class 6 to class 11 they turn out to be the most brilliant students no one will believe it if i tell it let's say swami is a hindu nationalist and he will say all these things and i am telling you go go and go to google and say st james school and sanskrit it will give you that or go to manasa you know in the in, the, in your google you go to Na- and say nasa and sanskrit they will give you why sanskrit is preferred for artificial intelligence because sanskrit no word can be duplicated if tomorrow you spoke to a computer and you said put it here put it may write p u t then you say but not there but here but it will get confused because b u t is but and p u t is put two different sounds the computer will get confused confused therefore the only language which is sound is similar is connected to the alphabets devanagari is sanskrit this has been declared by the nasa research but it doesn't come in our newspapers it comes in their publications but it doesn't come in our newspapers so it is not fashion to talk about our past we have done so many rama went from uh, from uh, uh, from uh, from uh, sri lanka he went back to ayodhya in a what pushpak viman he flew to keep his promise to come at a particular time to be no how to make aeroplanes as i told you vimana shastra is there 
and today people are studying that to see how we can understand the sanskrit and how what are the languages it will be only a matter of another 4 or 5 years when that will be completely translated into english